to run inside the house. Running inside the house is never attractive. But it's the carriage. I heard you the first time. Imagine, Mrs. Medlock. She's come all the way from India. You talk too much, Martha. Sorry, Mrs. Medlock. That's what my mom says. I talk too much. <laughs> Staff, I don't wish to repeat myself. Pay strict attention. Yes, yes Mrs. Medlock. As you know, a young lady is coming to Misselthwaite Manor, Mary Lennox. The master's young niece. She has no one else in the world. Poor child, her parents took off with the cholera in a far off land. Tisk tisk. What's cholera? You don't want to know, lad. Yes, I do. It's like a terrible fever, only worse. Never mind that. She's to be left to herself, more or less. I understand she's a moody child. Above all, there's to me no mention of, well, you know who. Mr. Craven's orders. Do you all understand? Yes, yes Mr. Sandlock. Good. She's here, she's here. I'll answer the door. You'll do no such thing. You forget yourself, Martha. Sorry, Mrs. Medlock. John? The door. Right, you are, Mrs. Medlock. The door. Mind your manners, chin up. The rest of you can all go back to your duties. There's more than enough work for all of you, I'm sure. Ah, oh, Mrs. Medlock. You are Mrs. Medlock? I am. You are Mrs. Crawford? Quite so. You have no idea how happy I am to be back in England. There's no place like England. My husband is in the Lancers. He's been reassigned. It was most kind of you to escort Miss Lennox from India. What choice did I have? That work of color was devastating. People have no idea. She couldn't return by herself. I should like to speak with Mr. Craven. I'm afraid that's not possible. He's in poor health. Never receives. How inconvenient. In any case, my duty is done. This is Mary Lennox. What? Her? This is my servant. Conchie. I never travel anywhere without Conchi. I find her indispensable. I thought Mary was with you, Conchi. She must have slipped away. Gracious, you haven't lost the child. Don't be upset. She was with us when we came into the house. But I don't wish to speak out of the term, but the girl has proven a trial. She's stubborn. Obstinate. Contrary. Willful. All your letter said was moody. She's that too. I've never seen the creature smile. The girl is spoiled beyond all reason. I hope she won't prove troublesome. I have no time for tantrums and such. Every ounce of energy I have goes to managing this large house. It's no easy task. I'm quite sure of that. Better see if you could find her, Kanji. She couldn't have gotten far. Yes, Mr. Hibb. Here she is now. 
Where were you, Mary? I wanted to look about. It's a gloomy sort of house, isn't it? I doubt if I shall be happy here. Best not to get my hopes up. She talks like a little old lady. Give yourself time, child. You'll soon make some friends. Oh, I don't think so. People never like me, and I never like people. I never have any friends. See what I mean? Yes, I do. I do indeed. My word. And she's a plain piece of goods. I heard her mother was a great beauty. Didn't hand much of it down. Seems thin to me. Too pale. Perhaps you'll improve as she grows older, like a leaping flower. There's not much to improve here at Misselthwaite Manor. She could do with a nicer expression. Go on, talk about me as if I weren't here. Why should I care? After all, I'm only Mary Lennox. Who might improve as she grows older? Then again, she might not. Dear me, she doesn't hold her tongue, does she? It's as I told you, Mrs. Medlock. Stubborn. Obstinate. Contrary. Willful. Spoiled! Such a rude and difficult child, what's she doing now? Such a rude and difficult child, what's she up to now? She's outspoken, she's aggressive. A common little sprat. She's defiant, she's aggressive. And, and such a brat! I'm just a young and innocent child, what's the problem now? Just a small and innocent child, can't be bothered now. Please understand me, mother. I live to disobey. One way or the other, I get my way. Such a bold and difficult child, what's she doing? Now, such a cold and difficult child, what's she thinking now? She's unruly, she's rambunctious, a pesky little bug. She's distempered, she's obnoxious, and oh, so smug. I'll never change, be reformed, understand me? Now, won't comply, won't conform, do you hear me now? I've never had a chaperone Tell me what to do I need some time to be alone So be gone Shoo! Well, I am What a Such a rude and difficult child What's she doing now? Such a rude and difficult child What's she up to now? I won't be boss, pay attention Won't be tossed, did I mention? Won't be shoved, won't be loved won't be throttled, won't be bumped, won't be thrashed, won't be bashed, won't be coddled, won't be dumped, won't be bridled, won't be broken. Yes, indeed, ladies, I have spoken. Miss Mary, are you up? Cook is so proud of herself. She found a recipe for making porridge the way they do in India. And she sprinkled cinnamon in the hot cocoa. Seems in India they like a lot more flavor than we do in England. Miss Mary! She's not so sleeping, is she? How should I know? I'll take that. Which one of you is Sowerby? We're all Sowerby, Miss Mary. Martha Sowerby. I'm Martha, Miss Mary. And this be Jane, Miss Mary. And this be Betty, Miss Mary. Mrs. Medlock said you were to look after me. You should have been here earlier. I had to dress myself. Can't you put on your own clothes? You're a strange sort of servant. I never had to dress myself when I was in India. It's the custom. When I was in India, can't you dress me? That would be the foreign lady in the strange dress? The one who came with you in the carriage? It's not a strange dress. It's called a sari. It's what Hindu women wear in India. You are very ignorant. It's true, I'm to look after you, Miss Mary, but I'm really not your servant. Then whose servants are you? She's Miss Medlock's servant. And Miss Medlock is Mr. Craven's servant. Does my uncle know I'm here? That he does, Miss, but you needn't expect to see him, because ten to one, you won't. He comes and goes as the mood strikes. But I want to see him. He rarely sees anyone. But I'm his niece. That's not likely to make any difference to the master. He's very set in his ways, he is. What is this stuff? Looks horrid. It's Indian porridge. Cook made it special for you. I never eat porridge. Throw it out. Throw, Throw it out? Oh, miss, you don't mean that. I always mean what I say. Put a spoon of sweet syrup on it or a bit of sugar. That'll make it tasty. Didn't you hear what I said? I don't want it. I don't want any breakfast. If some children saw this tray, they'd lick it clean. Why? Why? Because they're as hungry as young hawks and foxes. I don't know to just be hungry. Take it away. The cocoa too? I don't like cocoa. But Cook put in cinnamon. Cinnamon only makes it worse. I hate cinnamon. 
Now, help me with my dress. Mrs. Medlock says not to make a new you're not to make a nuisance of yourself. If you're in the house, try to stay out of her way. It's such a large house. I'll go exploring. Mrs. Medlock wouldn't like that. Mustn't go poking about, miss. How many rooms? Over 600, they say, but most of them is locked up. Dickon is working in the gardens. He likes company. Who is Dickon? My brother. you will like him. He knows all about making gardens bloom. And when it comes to animals, he's the best friend they've got. Birds come and eat out of his hand. However, little there is to eat. He always says a bit of bread to coax his pets. I doubt if I'll like him. And I'm sure he won't like me. I can't stand in chatter, miss. I have, I've got my duties. Take a walk outside the house. Get to know the place. That's my advice. Martha. Yes, miss? I heard someone crying last night. I'm sure of it. Did you hear someone crying? Goodness, miss, I never hear anything at night. I'm tucked away in the attic. I'm certain I heard someone crying. If you say so, miss. I know what I'll do. I'll get my skipping rope. That's a good idea, miss. Have yourself a little holiday. I do wish young Dr. Craven had spoken with me earlier. You come as a complete surprise, Miss Wigan. It must have slipped his mind. I'm not complaining. I think a governess for Miss Mary is an excellent idea. I can't tend to my duties and watch her as well. She's not an easy child to deal with. She's the one who gets on one's nerves. I understand. Books and lessons would do her good. The child needs discipline. I know how to deal with problem children. I hope you do. However, the decision rests with the master. Naturally. I shall bring up the matter when the moment seems right. Splendid. Mistress Mary, quite contrary, how does your garden grow? But silver bells and cockle shells and marigolds all in a row. That's Miss Mary now. Mistress Mary, quite contrary, Miss how Mary. does your garden grow? We don't skip rope inside the house. Skipping rope inside the house is never attractive. I don't see what difference it makes. I'm no good at it inside or out. Mrs. Crawford gave the skipping rope to me on the shipboard. She said exercise would do me good. No one skips rope in India. It just isn't done. Fresh air and proper exercise is essential to the learning process. Who are you? This is Miss Wigan. Young Dr. Craven suggested her as the position of a governess. Who's Dr. Craven? Bless me, child. You seem to know very little. Young Dr. Craven is your uncle's cousin. You don't mean a governess for me. Who else? I should like to know. I don't need a governess. I don't want a governess. I'm quite intelligent for my age. Allow me to be the judge of that, Miss Mary. No, no, no! No governess! I won't have one! Really? Mistress Mary, quite contrary, how does your garden grow? Silver bells and cockle shells and marigolds all in a row. There, what did I tell you? I'll say this for her. She has a mind of her own. More's the pity. Miss Medlock. Now what? The child didn't eat things for breakfast. I made everything special, too. Whoever heard of a young English lady not having a proper breakfast? She said she hates porridge. Hates cocoa, too. She, she can't abide cinnamon. I won't be held responsible for the last he goes to skin and bone. A governess is definitely called for. Quite. Stubborn. Upstairs. Contrary. Willful. Spoiled. Such a rude and difficult child, what's she doing now? Such a rude and difficult child, what's she up to now? She's unruly, she's rambunctious, a pesky little bug. She's distempered, she's obnoxious, and oh, so smug. Such a bold and difficult child, what's she doing now? Such a cold and difficult child, what's she thinking now? She's outspoken, she's oppressive, a common little sprat. She's defiant, she's aggressive, and such a brat! I, I know it's you, Mr. Robin. I know you're chirping. Does your feathers good to watch your lad work, eh? Well, I won't disappoint you. Let's see, I have some violets and some Johnny Jump Ups and some coral bells and maybe just a little bit of sweet fern. Who are you talking with, Dickon? More than Dr. Craven. He's up there. Follows me around like a stray lamb. See him? You mean that Robin Redgrass? Aye, he's a smart one, that little bird. He likes to chatter. I take your word for it. I have no doubt you understand his peculiar language. You certainly have a way with the creatures of the field. Mother says it's a gift. 
Have you been to see Oben Weatherstaff? Yes, I'm pleased with his progress. His broken leg is on the mend. However, I don't want him up and about, and he wants to come down here and see the grounds. He's got nothing to fear. I have everything under control like a good gardener's apprentice. I'm sure you do. I'll visit him, I'll visit him pretty soon. See, to, to try to cheer him up. We are sure him that all is well. That's the best medicine. Leave it to me. Good lad. Someone coming, you say? Wonder who that might be. 101, 102, 103. Morning, miss. I know who you are. Dick and Sowerby. Martha's brother. Hi. You know everything about the flowers and animals. Martha said so. I do know a lot. I ain't ashamed to admit that. Aren't you kind of young to be the head gardener? I'm not, I'm not the head gardener. I help out a few days a week. Only it's every day now that old Ben Weatherstaff is laid up with a broken leg. He ain't as young as he'd like to be. I'm Mary Lennox. I know, miss. You come all the way from India. You've seen all kinds of strange animals and such. I envy you. Well, one doesn't meet animals. Well, I suppose you mean the animals in India, elephants and the like. I ain't never seen an elephant, excepting in picture books. They could be disagreeable, especially if they have a bad tooth. Dickon, when you have a moment, come down to the stable and check on the new pony. He doesn't seem lively enough to me, and he's off his feet, too. I'll come to the stable as soon as I check on old Ben Weatherstaff. This is my brother Phil. He's a stable boy. Miss Mary. There seem to be a lot of sowerbees at Mistlethwaite Manor. We're a large family. Aye. Dickon! Dickon! It's mother. She'll be wanting to see us all. Best get the others. Aye, she will. Dickon! If it weren't for Mistlethwaite Manor, I, I reckon us sowerbees will go hungry many a night. I'm hungry now. I didn't have any breakfast. Mother will have something in her bag. You'll see. You seem pleasant enough. Maybe we could be friends, but it's doubtful. I never have any friends. There you are, Dickon. Didn't you hear me calling? I was talking with Miss Mary. The only lady all the way from India? How nice. Welcome to Yorkshire, child. Please give my regards to your dear uncle. She hasn't had any breakfast. No breakfast? You poor thing. Mustn't go without eating. Doesn't do. I got some delicious apples that Ben Weatherstaff said I might pick, and some tasty cinnamon buns I baked for Dickon and his brothers and sisters. They were raised on them. I don't like cinnamon, but maybe an apple. An apple it is. You're right pale, Miss Mary. You could do with a bit more color in your cheeks. <coughs> Why does one section of the garden have a wall around it? You, you mean over there? Yeah, I couldn't find a door. There's a locked door somewhere, but no one's seen it in over ten years. It's been covered by shrubs and vines. Ben will know where it is. If there's a locked door, there must be a key. The master buried the key when he locked the garden, said no one was to ever go in there again. Why? Gracious child, didn't your uncle tell you? I haven't seen my uncle. I suspect he's not too happy I'm here. Why did he bury the key to the garden? Tell me. I suppose you have a right to know. There's a terrible accident. The garden was your aunt's favorite spot. She tended it all by herself. Roses mostly. She's just a bit of a girl. There's an old tree with a branch bent like a seat on it. One day, while she was sitting there, the branch broke and she fell to the ground. It hurt so bad that the next day she died. The doctors thought Mr. Craven would go out of his mind and die too, but he didn't. That's why he hates that walled garden and would never let anyone go in there. He loved Azalea so. Lilius? That was your aunt's name. There's some say she only married Archibald Craven because he was rich, him with the crooked back and all, but I believe they loved each other dearly. Now he does nothing but hide himself away from the world, traveling here and there to forget. Poor man. It's very lonely here. I don't know you can say that, Miss Mary. You haven't been here long. Doesn't matter. I'm always lonely wherever I am, and I expect I will always be. Rubbish, child. That's the way to look at things. Mother! Mother! It's Jane and Betty! Mother! That's Martha! What's in the basket? Cinnamon buns, I'll wager. Let's all have one. Better not let Miss Medlock catch us. Leave the apples. I'm taking them back home with me. I'll bake some tasty pies. Only stop by a visit with old Ben. Poor codger. Broken like is no blessing. But I couldn't leave without saying hello. You mean to say all these servants are your children, Mrs. Sowerby? They're my children all, yes. Of course they belong to Mr. Sowerby, too. May you rest in heaven. How curious. And I suppose I shall spend my days wandering about being lonely and bored. I know, I know what we'll do, Miss Mary. That is, if you'd like. I don't mean to presume. What? You must get yourself a bit of ground and go garden. It will do wonders for you. You won't be lonely then. You'll see. I know nothing about gardens. Let Dickon be your teacher, Miss. He could be like a brother to you. I've never had any brothers or sisters. I've got 11. <laughs> <laughs> I know what we'll do, Miss Mary. What? We'll make you an honorary member of the Sowerby family. 
What's a curious proposition? Yes, I think I might like that. Thank you. Welcome to the family, Miss Mary. A family is a sacred thing, blessed from high above, conceived in righteous virtue, and proudly crowned with love. Through thick and thin, rain or shine, we care for each other, the children, each and every one, and the mother. We're one big happy family, a common English clan, one big happy family, working hand in hand. We're a hearty crew, a cockney stew, a motley potpourri, and without a do, we welcome you to one big happy family. Come on, John, 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 John. If I should ever leave me home to travel far and wide I don't know how I'd manage it to you, I must confide I would miss me brothers, miss me sisters, probably miss me mom So I stay right here, here until I One big happy family, a common English clan One big happy family, working hand in hand We're hearty crew, a lively lot, a melting pot, a spicy recipe I've never had a brother, a sister, or friends. I've lived quite secluded life since I don't know when. Until this day, I've been alone, no one with whom to play. And I must admit, I find it strange, but I think I'll stay with one big happy family, a common English clan. One big happy family, working hand in hand. He doesn't wish to get well. If one has no will to get well, one doesn't. How perceptive. To brood on one's ailments only magnifies the situation. If you say so, nurse. I have my orders. I do as I'm told. You have your place as I do. Ours is not to question. From time to time, I have made suggestions about treatment to young Dr. Craven, but they fall on deaf ears. I've learned to hold my tongue. Wise. If only the boy wouldn't cry so much, and that temper. I believe that's because he's unhappy. And spoiled. The boy is terribly spoiled. I've said enough, perhaps too much. I would never betray a confidence. Thank you, Mrs. Medlock. You're welcome, I'm sure. You want to see me, Mrs. Medlock? Ah, oh, Miss Mary, it's your uncle. He wants to see you before he leaves. He's going somewhere? Isn't he always traveling to foreign places? Somehow it doesn't even seem natural. Shall I go brush my hair, put on my best dress? There isn't enough time he wishes to see you at once. Come along now. What will I say to him? How should I know? What if he doesn't like me? That's your affair. <laughs> sir, Mr. Craven. Yes, who is it? It's Miss Mary, sir. Ah, you can go, Mrs. Medlock. Wait outside. I'll call for you when I want you to take her away. Very good, sir. Step closer, child. Are you well? Yes. I'll be gone for quite some time. You'll be left to your own whims. Consequently, I'm thinking about employing a governess for you. Don't make me have a governess! That's what Mrs. Sowerby said. She's fond of you. Do you like Mrs. Sowerby? Oh, yes, I do, very much. She, she knows about young people. She has 12 of her own. Many of them here are in service at the Misselthwaite Manor. I know. She thinks you should get stronger before you have a governess. Seems to think you don't eat enough. Are you afraid of me? I'm generally not afraid of people who I never get to see. 
Hmm. Well, I suppose you've heard that I'm a hunchback. I am not. My back isn't very straight, that's all. I fear I know nothing of children. Legally, I am your guardian, though I'm a poor one for any child. I can give you neither time nor attention. I am too ill and wretched and distracted. I sent for you today because Miss Sowerby said I ought to see you. I'm fond of Mrs. Sowerby. She's kind and respectable. I listen to her advice. I don't know if I shall see you again, if ever, but I do wish for you to be happy and comfortable. Play outdoors as much as you can. Miss Sowerby says it would do you good. Do you want toys, books, dolls? Might I? Might I? Speak up, child. What is it that you want? Might I have a bit of earth? A bit of earth? What do you mean? To plant seeds in, to make things grow. I want to see them come alive. No doubt you've been talking to that boy, Dickon. Hmm. A bit of earth. You can have as much earth as you want. Is something wrong, Uncle? The way you're staring at me. You remind me of someone else who loved the earth and things that grow. When you see a bit of earth, take it, child. Make it come alive for you. May I take it from anywhere if it is not wanted? Why not? Anywhere if that is your wish. There's the county fair in the village next week. You might like that. I haven't been in over in 10 years. I used to enjoy it then. Miss Sowerby asked that I give you permission to visit her cottage any time you like. I said yes. Thank you, sir. Miss Sowerby and Mrs. Medlock went to school with each other a very long time ago. Miss Medlock? Yes, sir? Now that I've seen the child, I agree with Mrs. Sowerby. You mean she's not to have a governess? Not yet, anyway. Give her simple, healthy food. Let her run wild in the gardens. Oh, and don't look after her too much. She needs liberty, fresh air, and romping about. Uncle said I might have a garden. Fine by me, I'm sure. It'll keep you out of the house. Well, goodbye, Mary Lennox. He really is a nice man. If you say so. Now come along, Miss Mary. You heard the master. You're to look after yourself, but you know the rules. No wandering and poking about. It's unattractive. I heard someone crying again last night. Don't talk rubbish. Oh, Martha, wait till you hear. You seem happy enough, Miss Mary. Oh, yes, I just met my uncle. Good for you, Miss. I was afraid he'd leave without saying as much as a hello to you. He says I could do whatever I want and I could have my garden. Diggin will be a big help there. He says I could visit your mother's cottage whenever I wish. Mother will be pleased. She's taking a real liking to you. She says you need a little mothering. I heard it again last night. Heard what? <sighs> Mrs. Medlock said I was talking rubbish. I know what I heard and I know where it's coming from. You don't mean the crying. <clears throat> of course. Oh, miss, don't go poking about. It'll only upset things. You know who is it that cries. You know, don't you? Yes, I do, miss. But, not, but I can't talk about it. None of us can. It's one of the master's rules. I could lose my position. Now, please, don't ask any more questions. Why is it such a big mystery? I know it must be done. I must go poking about. But first, I'll have a word with Mrs. Sowerby. I don't want it. I won't take it. No, no, no! But, Master Colin, you must. No, no, no! Now look what you've done. Serves you right. It's all your fault. Your medicine is all over the floor. I intend to tell Dr. Craven about tell this. Tell him anything you like. What do I care? You know you're not supposed to excite yourself. Then stop giving me medicine I don't want. You're supposed to humor me. You're supposed to do everything I say. Get back into bed, Master Colin. I wish to be left alone. At once. No, no, no! I'll yell until I wake up the whole household. You know I am capable of that. Ah! 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 Very well. Calm down. Don't get excited. I'm leaving. Good. Who are you? Are you a ghost? No, I'm not. I'm Colin Craven. I'm Mary Lennox. Mr. Craven is my uncle. He's my father. I suppose we're cousins then. I suppose we must be. 
Mrs. Salby told me about you only this afternoon. You're a great mystery. If it weren't for Mrs. Salby, I know little about Miss Lithwaite Manor. My father won't let people talk about me. The servants are forbidden. Why? If I live, I may be a hunchback instead of just an invalid. Is that why I hear you crying? Yes, I cry because my father is wretched to look at me. Are you sure you're not a ghost? I ought to know whether I'm a ghost or not. You must come visit me every day. I have books to read, but I get bored of books. I bet you don't know how old I am. I'm... When you were in India, did you ever step on a cobra? I should say not. Have you always been here? Yes, I used to wear an iron brace to keep my back straight, but a specialist came from London. He told my father to take it off. He told him it was stupid and that I was supposed to... I'm supposed to get as much fresh air as possible. I hate fresh air. I hate sunshine. I bet you don't know how old I am. Ten. How did you know that? Mrs. Salby told me about when you were born, the garden door was locked and the key was buried. And Dick and Tony, it's been locked for ten years. What garden? What? Who locked? Who did it? Where was the key buried? Your father hates that garden. He's the one who locked the door and buried the key. Why? He, he, I intend to reclaim that garden. You father, you, I intend to reclaim that garden. Your father said I might have any bit of earth I wanted and make it come alive. Do you really think you won't live? That's what they say. Do you want to live? No, but I don't want to die either. When I feel ill, I lie in my bed and cry and cry. My doctor is my father's cousin. He is quite poor. Once I die, he will have all of Mistlethwaite Manor once my father passes on. I wouldn't think he'd want me to live. Are you sure you're not a ghost? I ought to know whether I'm a ghost or not. Some, my dreams feel, seem very real. When I open my eyes, I do not believe I'm awake. I'll prove it to you. Ouch! See, you're awake. I don't allow anyone to touch me except the doctor. How dare you? There's no need to be unpleasant. Don't pinch me again. Are you here on a visit? My parents... I live here now. My parents died in India. There was an outbreak of cholera. Do you miss your parents? I can't remember much about them. Servants raised me. Father was always away in military maneuvers, and Mother spent most of her time getting ready to attend parties. She was a great beauty. I'm nothing like her. I assume she found me something of a nuisance. You have to come and visit every day. I have books to read, but I get bored of books. Have, when you were in India, did you ever step on a cobra? I should say not. Have you always been here? I don't want to die. Do you... Master Colin, what is the meaning of this? Nurse tells me you threw your medicine on the floor and refused to get into bed. Get out, get out, get out! Can't you see I have a visitor? How did you get in here? Young lady, this is hardly the hour for visiting. Master Colin is unwell. I must ask you to leave. No, no, no! I want you to stay! That is out of the question. Don't excite yourself, Colin. Nurse, see that he gets into bed. I'll prepare a sedative. Yes, Doctor. No, no, no! I want Mary to stay! Ah! 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 He's, he certainly has a temper. I hope you're satisfied, Miss. I meant no harm. Stay out of these rooms in the future. Understand? This is the most curious house I've ever been in. Isn't it wonderful, Dickon? The county fair. You are coming. You must. There's a lot to do here. You can't be working all the time. Well, I don't really count it as work, as long as I'm out in the open. But everyone's going to the fair, even Miss Medlock. It's the one day of year she almost seems human. I've got flowers for everyone. I even have some snowdrops, crocuses, and down lilies. I'll go and hurry them along. Moth says everyone takes flowers to the fair. Why? I can't really explain that, Miss Mary. It's been going back hundreds and hundreds of years, maybe more. When you take a flower to the fair, it's supposed to bring you luck. How curious. Oh, you'll never guess where I've been. Speaking with Master Colin again? <laughs> yes, I've seen him every day 
since I first learned about him last week. Nurse knows what I visit, but doesn't tell the doctor. But what I really wanted to tell you is that I met Ben Weatherstaff, and he told me where the garden door ought to be. Did he tell you where to find the key? He doesn't know that. Colin will be disappointed. The bird, he's trying to tell us something. I can't make it out. I think he wants us to follow him. He does. I can't leave these flowers. I don't want people picking at them. He's flying off. You go, Miss Mary. I'll come back as soon as I sell all these flowers off. Don't be long. We'll be waiting for you, Dickon. Dickon, Dickon. Yeah. You, d you don't understand the robin. He flew down to the earth and began to peck the soil. He was almost in a fury. That's no, nothing to fret about. He's probably just looking for some twigs and leaves. A bird likes his comfort. It wasn't that kind of digging. He kept chirping and looking at me. Finally, I realized what he wanted. What? He wanted me to dig up that spot, and I did, and I found something. Look. Well, I'll be darned. It's the key that ma the master buried all them years back, I'll wager. Has to be. What are you going to do? What do you think I'm going to do? I'm going to open the secret garden. No telling what you're going to find in there. No one's been in there for over ten years. I'm not afraid, are you? No. Come along then, Chicken. Hi, Miss Mary. I can't deny the girl seems to work some magic on Master Colin. His temper tantrums aren't nearly as wicked as they were, and his breathing seems better. We must never forget, there's always the danger of relapse. Master Colin has been through a lot. Those weak legs, rheumatic fevers, coughs and colds that nearly killed him, even a touch of typhoid. He seems less lonely, and he hasn't cried in weeks. Hmm. I get quite tired telling you stories about India. Besides, I mustn't look at the garden. You have a garden, Miss Mary? Not really a garden. You couldn't call it a garden. A piece of earth. That's all it is. My uncle said I might have it. When was that? A few months ago, before you went abroad. And what do you have in your piece of earth? Only the things Dick and Sowby recommends. Good lad, Dickon. Things are starting to grow. There are clusters of purple crocuses and gold ones. Leaves are beginning to break out and uncurl. It's the season. I plan to visit this piece of earth soon. Now, now, Master Con. I'm impressed with your improvement, but we mustn't rush things. <coughs> I'll return this evening. I must visit Ben Weatherstaff. I'm afraid his broken leg is not as good as I thought. He may have to go to the hospital. <coughs> Keep up with the medication, nurse. Yes, Dr. Craven. Does 
Dr. Craven ever smile? <laughs> Is that a funny question? No, miss, but that's the first ask about you when you first came to Miss Withwit. Does Miss Mary ever smile? I suppose I've changed a great deal. Still, it's nothing to laugh about. I want you to stay with me all afternoon. You're being silly. I have too many things to attend to. Besides, I must visit Ben. You have to do what I say. Everybody does. That's again. You're like a young Raja, sitting on a silken pillow in India, always wanting his own way. Well, I won't give in to you this time. I won't stay. If you don't stay, I'll work myself into a tantrum. Go ahead, you're so spoiled. How dare you speak to me like that? How dare you? I'm going to the garden and leaving you here. If you go without me, I'll scream and yell. See if I can. Besides, I can scream and yell louder than you. Can't. Can. Can't. Can. Ah! 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 There, how do you like that? Now what's all this? Things were going so well with you two. Hysterics again? My, my. I won't be ordered about by Colin. I'm his friend, not his servant. She's cruel, nurse. That's what she is. Cruel. So says the young Raja. Ouch. Now what? I felt the lump on my back. It's growing. You didn't feel a lump. You only wanted attention. If you did feel a lump, it was only a hysterical lump. Hysteria makes lumps. There's nothing the matter with your back. There is. There is. Nurse, show me his back this minute. Perhaps he won't let me. Go ahead, show her. She'll see. She'll be sorry. She'll apologize. There. Satisfied? There's not a single lump there. There's not a lump as big as a pin, except for backbone lumps. And you can only feel them because you're thin. I've got backbone lumps, too. They'll be gone when I'm fatter. It'll be the same with you. I didn't know that he thought he had a lump on his spine. His back is weak only because he won't exercise and spends most of his time in bed. I could have told him there was no lump. Do you think I could live to grow up? You probably will if you would do what you are told and not give way to your temper. Remember what the specialist from London said? Stay out a great deal in the fresh air. Mary. What? Yes, Raja. Now, now, Miss Mary, be nice. I want, I want to go to the garden with you and Dickon. Dickon found a baby fox and a crow's come to visit. Plenty of time for that later. Master Colin must rest. I'll fluff the pillow. <coughs> oh, Mary, I was afraid you were going to give away our secret to Dr. Craven. Never, Colin. It's our secret and Dickens. Tell me more about the garden. It's been left alone for so long that the roses have climbed and climbed and climbed till they hang from the branches and walls and creep over the ground, almost like a strange gray mist. I'm afraid I can't be too encouraging, Miss Wigan. Since I was in the vicinity, <clears throat> I thought I might as well stop by. I was hoping the last word or two with Archibald Craven. I heard he was back. Back in, back, in, back in England, you mean? Yes, London. He stays at the Empress Hotel, a fashionable place. Not that Mr. Craven would notice. I suppose he's probably sitting in a large chair in the lobby, surrounded by gloom and doom. You say he expressly said Miss Mary was not to have a governess. For the time being. I must say that the child has improved. She no longer sulks and pouts. The last time I saw her, she looked pretty, like a wildflower. Mrs. Sowerby, a neighbor woman, attributes to its garden work. Garden work? You know, planting, weeding, picking away the bugs. Miss Mary picked these out for me. Aren't they choice? Beautiful. Is Dr. Craven about? Of course. He rarely ever leaves the estate. If the position of the governess is not available, I'll have to look elsewhere. I've already wasted too much time thinking about Miss Await Manor. You might as well tell Mr. Craven when he returns that a wildflower is very frequently mistaken for a weed. That I will. A nice bit of sun will do you good, Master Colin. It's a real pleasure to see you up and about. You sound like the doctor. Dr. Craven? Miss Mary's my doctor. 
Shall I try to find her? She must be somewhere about. No, she'll not be here, same as yesterday. I think John and I ought to stay here, sir. No, I don't need you. I must have catch a chill. The sun can fool you. <coughs> How's that? Comfy? Uh, go back to the house. Very good, sir. Hello, Mr. Robin. Fine day. We looked for you this a while ago. Nurse made me take a hot bowl of soup. Said I couldn't go out till I did. Who fetched you here? Y the same as yesterday. Your brother, the footman. John. And your sister, Betty. I sent them back. I don't want to take any chances. Come along then, Colin. There's a lot of work to be done. Every day, new day. Help me. Careful. Easy does it. You've been practicing them back, back exercises I've been showing you. That was better than yesterday. I've got six new seed in my apron pockets. We bought with my own money. We can plant them today. Hi. I never realized the outdoors could be so much fun. So much nicer than staying in your stuffy room. Mary Dickon. What now? I want to show you something. A cameo brooch. A cameo brooch. I've never seen one so lovely. Look, Dickon. Aye, it's lovely for sure. Who's the, who's the beautiful lady printed on it? My mother. For a while, I didn't look, want to look at it. I was mad at her. Are you still angry with her? No. You've got to believe in things real hard, Colin. If, some, if you believe hard enough, sometimes they come true. It's a kind of magic. Like taking a flower to the fair, but it'll only work for good luck. It'll only work if you believe. Here are the seeds. Mistress Mary, quite, quite contrary, how does your garden grow? With silver bells and cockle shells and marigolds all in a row. understand it myself, but I must admit, it's something of a miracle. Master Khan has been colored. Who would have thought it? I've seen him smile once or twice. Imagine that. I give a lot of credit to Miss Mary. Can't be pleasant stuck in a wheelchair. Down by the stable, I've seen him feed a cow to a pony. He never. When I pick him up from his bed, I can tell he's gained a pound or two. All I know is something's happening with Master Colin. He's no longer sullen. He does no longer brood. Off and try, he seems to have a change of mood. Smiles willingly and eats when he should. And he's actually becoming quite good. Yes, something's happening with Master Colin. He doesn't seem the same. He does not look as pale. His bedroom doesn't smell as stale. Do tell, yes, something's happening with Master Colin. I'm not sure what to think. The other day he gave you a wink? Something's happening with Master Colin. He never seems tired, he never seems worn. He's no longer filled with anger and scorn. It's a blessing to behold. It's marvelous, I'm sure. I wonder what could be the sudden cure. It's a blessing to behold. It's marvelous, I'm sure. I wonder what could be the sudden cure. All his short life, he's been a little twit. Not a day went by without a sudden fit. Now all at once he's happy, breathing fresh air. 
While standing by his bed, he slapped me on me derriere. Good God, yes, something's happening with Master Colin. He doesn't seem the same, he does not look as pale. His bedroom doesn't smell as stale. He does no longer brood, all contrary, he seems to have a change of mood. Something's happening with Master Colin. He never seems tired, he never seems worn. He's no longer filled with anger and scorn. It's a blessing to behold, it's marvelous, I'm sure. I wonder what could be the sudden cure. It's a blessing to behold, it's marvelous, I'm sure. I wonder what, what could be the sudden Dickon? Yes? Do you know what I want to be when I'm fully grown? Master of Mistletoe Manor? Besides that, I mean. I want, I intend to be a scientist. The, the greatest scientist the world has ever known. Well, I plan to stay right here, doing what I'm doing now. I should pay attention more, ve more to vegetables. Potatoes, cabbages, and carrots. The flowers are must, much nicer to look at. Well, I don't reckon that people eat flowers. English people, anyway. My, f my father would be surprised to see that I'm out here in the garden feeling ever so much stro stronger. You have Dr. Craven write to him. No. I want it to come as a surprise. When we're done, me, me and Mary should show you the hedgehogs. They move around quite a, quite a lot. I've never seen a real hedgehog. You'll smile when you see them. Funny little creatures they are. I never thought I'd live to see the day. Hi, Mother. Master Colin, do you remember me, lad? Yes, you're Mrs. Sowerby. You were, the, you, were when, you were there when I was still feeling strong enough to go to the fair. People, I didn't like it there. People stared at me. It was because of my chair. I can hardly believe my eyes. Show them, Master Colin. Show them my mother. Eh? I'll help. Mr. Colin, careful, you'll fall. Go on, Colin. Walk. What are you saying, girl? Walk?
wouldn't have believed it unless I saw it with my own eyes. It's true. I know your mother's in this garden. Mary, Dickon, Mrs. Sowerby, I shall get well. I shall get well. And I shall live forever and ever and ever. say my frock would be ready. Noon time tomorrow, Mrs. Crawford. Are they going to send it here to the hotel or are you going to pick it up? I asked them to deliver it here. Thank you, Conchi. Yes, ma'am. Oh. Josh. Mr. Craven, Mr. Craven, Mr. Archer Book Craven, a Miss Waite Manor, Yorkshire. Did you hear that, Conchi? Mr. Craven, Mr. Archer Book Craven, here, boy. One moment. Look at that, Conchie. He didn't even look at his letter. He seems tired. From all I've heard, he's perpetually tired. A listless dull man, terribly depressed. Now that I've seen him, I'm quite glad he wasn't, he wasn't with us when we came from India with that impossible Mary Lennox. He does seem sad. Never got over his wife's death, I hear. He can't bear to be with his son. He reminds him too much of her. I suspect he's a brute. Men like that usually are. Perhaps you should introduce yourself. Not likely. Wouldn't pay to know such a gloomy man. If he wishes to be unhappy, let him be. So still. He might be dreaming. Dream on, Mr. Craven. Come along, Conchie. There are better things to talk about. Time for tea. Yes, Mrs. Crawford. to the garden. Look at the roses. Come into the garden. It's been a long time since you've been here. I miss you. Those rose trees we planted long ago, they're growing again. We were afraid that they might be stunted. The family of robins, how they chattered and chirped. Our garden's a wonderful garden, isn't it? We will always be so happy here. You mustn't be sad. Elise? Of course, dear. It's Lilius. I'm here. I'm always close. Where would you expect me to be? Where? Where? I'm in the garden, Archie. I'm in the garden, our garden. That's it. I was dreaming. Just dreaming. A letter? How? Miss Susan Sowerby. How odd. Dear sir, I trust you not thinking me forward, but as you have been kind to me and mine in the past, I feel I could take the liberty. You will recall, sir, we once talked about young Miss Mary and how a governess might not be needed. She's come on so nicely, she has. But sir, please sir, if I were you, I would come home. I think you'd be glad to come home. And if, you, and if you will excuse me, sir, I think your lovely young wife would want you to come home too, if she were here. Your obedient servant, Susan Sowerby. Is this all part of the dream? 
Am I still dreaming? I have to go back to the house. I'll have to find the key and I'll open the garden. I have to go at once. <laughs> Did he ever? Said he was going to open up the walled garden. Nobody's been in there for over 10 years. Has he gone mad? I think I'd best try to locate him. With his condition, he might fall on his head or attack someone. Oh! Poor, poor man, still eating with grief. I'll come with you. I better inform Dr. Craven. He wants to know about this. Are you sure it was the house carriage? I am, and it was my uncle who got out. This will be a surprise for Colin. It was your mother who wrote. Out of the goodness of her heart, you can be sure. I hope it won't anger Colin. We'll see and find out. Where's Calixtus? Yeah? Let's go in. What's wrong with you, Cousin Archie? You seem possessed. Call it what you will. What are you two doing in here? Who found the key? Who opened the garden? Who dared? I did, Uncle. You said I might have any bit of earth I wanted and make it come alive. How did you find the key? A robin showed me where it was buried. A robin? Fanciful, I'd say. No, sir, there is true magic here. I feel it all the time. I have to go back to the house. I wish, I wish to see my son. There's no need for that, sir. How is that? See for yourself. What? Who oh. am I? This is all part of the dream. It's him, sir. It's your son. It's why I wanted you to come home. A boy needs his father. It's Master Colin, no doubt about it. Can it be? It's me, Father. You can believe it. You look so different out of the wheelchair. So Where you, so you tend the rose, sir? This will connect well. So tall. You look just like your mother. My son. It's the garden that did it, and Mary, and Dickon. I'm going to learn to love again. You can do it. I'm going to learn to live again. You can do it. A lifetime left to live, so much to give. We know that you can do of stumbling, sir. Everybody does. Don't be afraid of falling, sir. Everybody does. I you can do it. I can do it. You can do it. Watch me do it. Just one step and you'll be free. Just one small step and I'll be free. You can do it. Just one small step and you will see You can do it Got a lifetime left to live So much to give Now that you are finally free You can do it We won't just run We're going to fly You can do it you Colin, come back to the house to me. I want to know everything. I guess the god doesn't have to be a secret anymore. Master Colin, 
Where's your wheelchair? I'm never getting back into that chair. We'll walk to the house, together. It might be too much for you. Not anymore. See?